And good evening. Welcome. Thank you for coming out tonight to uh, explore with us a little bit more about these ideas that were floating out there in terms of uh, a high school here at Emmanuel. Uh, my name is Glenn Schlecht. I'm the senior pastor here at Emmanuel, and uh, I'm kind of excited about what's, what's possible and what is going on right now. So let me start us with a word of prayer, and then we'll continue on with uh, some sharing and some opportunity to offer some feedback to all of us. So join me, if you would. Father in heaven, thank you for tonight and an opportunity we have to uh, continue to talk and wonder what it is that you may be up to here in this place and time. We thank you for the opportunities you always put before us. And as we strive to live as Easter people, people who know who we are because of your son and because of his death and resurrection and the life that we've been given. I pray that you would bless us and Lord, let your presence be felt tonight. So we put ourselves, our time and the wondering, the thinking, the planning all into your hands as we pray it in the power of Jesus name. Amen. So as I said, I'm kind of excited about what is out here in front of us. And the way I want to approach this is to go back just a little bit, because many of you may not realize that this whole concept of a high school is not a new idea for us here at Emmanuel. 20 years ago, we actually had a, along with an association of, of other churches, we had a principal called and who was here starting to work on recruitment and sadly, uh, some tragic things went on with the, the principal and his wife, some personal things that happened and uh, the bottom kind of fell out of that time of recruitment and we had to put the whole idea of a high school on a shelf. Well, it's time to bring it off the shelf, I think. Um, a lot's changed over 20 years in terms of technology, schools, and culture. In early 2020, the idea of a high school here at Emmanuel resurfaced with all the things that, that we were going through, uh, not only as a school and community, but as a country, as a world. And we started thinking again, hmm, maybe it's time to, to bring this back up one more time. And so uh, this idea of a high school has been on the minds of a number of us on staff here at Emmanuel, especially again for the last few years. Now earlier this spring, Cheryl Gilbert, Emmanuel's principal, raised a question with me wondering, now that we got the toddler ministry all well in hand and up and running and functioning, maybe it's time to put our energy into the other end of the spectrum. And I said, I think so too. I think that is a great idea. And I want to introduce Cheryl as our school principal. And Cheryl is going to share just a little bit about some of the positives as we were thinking about, okay, why a high school here at Emmanuel? And Cheryl is going to share a little bit of the positive end of things that that has us thinking about this opportunity like this now. So, Cheryl. Well, first of all, we are so blessed as a faculty and staff of Emmanuel. I come to work every day with a group of people that are beyond excited that God has given us the opportunity, this place, this time, to provide the highest possible quality of education we can and to share the love of Jesus in each and every academic subject. And we have this positive staff who is so thrilled to do that. And it's a blessing for me to have the privilege to walk beside them. So last year, as Pastor said, we were blessed to start the toddler program. And that has been fairly full the whole time. And I don't know if we ha ever have 10 toddlers well in hand. So any of you <laughs> that have spent the day with 10 children under three years old, 
I, things are in hand for moments and times, but we are blessed because now we also get to share the love of Jesus with those toddlers and those families. And um, it's so fulfilling to get to sit with a two or three year old that's leading the TikTok prayer or bringing up things with their parents at home and parents go, you had to teach them that because I didn't at home. And so it's opened wonderful ministry conversations. Also, last April, we were able to complete our National Lutheran Schools accreditation again. And that really looked at all of our programs and gave us affirmation for what we're doing great. And it pointed out and gave us goals for what we are in the process of improving over the next five years. So that'll be a five-year process as we look at the entire elementary school and early childhood and how we can make that an even better academic and Christian atmosphere for students. This year, we have taken a great deal of time looking at the science of reading and how we're instructing children at the early ages so that we have give kids the best start to have phonemic awareness, phonological awareness, and get them on that right path for reading. And we're so excited to implement a new curriculum this fall. So as we look at what does God, what does God have for us to do? What does he want each one of us to do? What does that ministry look like for the city of Loveland and for the kids who are here? And so many families have reached out to me and said, just any ideas? Is there any way we at U at Emmanuel could provide this highly academic, excellent curriculum for high schoolers and teach them about Jesus and give them Jesus in this world going on out there. And that's, um, I think that's what brought up the conversation. And God has really honestly just blessed us in so many ways. And so what does it look like now to reach out to possibly high schoolers and bless them and their families with this solid academic Christian education? Um, so that's what started the discussion, and I'm so happy that you're all here because it's pretty exciting to move forward with that discussion. Thank you, Cheryl. Now the, the question, or answering the question of why a high school at Emmanuel is not just about the positives and the exciting opportunities that are out there for us. The reality is that our current culture is moving further and further away, and in some ways is diametrically opposed to our biblical Christian values. And so it is, without apology, that we recognize and acknowledge that that is also one of the drivers for us thinking about a high school. The culture is not turning back. It's not going to turn around. We're headed down a path, and this train is speeding along. So the question is, what is it that we are going to do in response to that? Now, in the event that you may not be fully aware of uh, all the places and all the directions that our culture is headed, uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Robin Dougal, who is Emmanuel's Director of Discipleship and Connecting Ministries, to share a little bit from a, a recent conference that he was at and a little bit of an insight that, that grounds us in some of the reality, some of the dark reality of what really is going on in our public schools today and where our culture is headed. So, Pastor Robin. Hi, everybody. Forgive me, I've got a little bit of a frog in my throat, but it's really good to see all of you tonight. 
Um, I've been a student of culture for many, many years, and it's just one of those things that God impressed upon me at a young age when I had children that were small to be looking at the world around me, not just to be able to evaluate it as a person who followed Jesus, but also to be able to see what was going on in my world through the lens of my parenting and through the care and love that I had for my family, as well as for the body of Christ and the people that were in my life doing a Jesus-following lifestyle with me. And so I've been kind of keenly aware throughout my, cor throughout my life about the things that are going on around me. And when Cheryl and Pastor Glenn talk about a compelling why, why are we even entertaining a new strategy in our school ministry to expand our school. We really believe that it's not just all the positive, wonderful things that God has blessed us with, but there's not necessarily a compelling negative why, but rather a challenging why, because I don't think any of us, any of us would deny that when you look around the world and you look at culture these days, that the compelling challenges that are out there cause us to be able to evaluate, number one, who we are, but also, most importantly, what we believe and what we want to be able to pass on as a legacy to our families and to the people that are going to be following Jesus around us. And so I've had the opportunity over the last number of years, but especially recently, to gather together with other Christians around our community here in Loveland and northern Colorado and talk about the culture. And uh, through those meetings and through those conversations, I've had an opportunity to meet some extraordinary people. Now, I was thinking that tonight, originally when we were talking about this, that maybe I'd just lay out for you a nice, thorough outline of all the challenges we face. You know, I'm a teacher in many respects, and so I have, love outlines, and I love whiteboards, and I love wonderful bullet-ridden PowerPoint slides. But instead of doing that, I would just show you a brief video of one woman's experience. A mom who lives here in northern Colorado, whose children at attended the Pooter School District Middle Schools up north of Fort Collins, and a brief video clip which would summarize what she experienced in her daughter's life that would give you a little bit of a snapshot. I'm not going to try to make any comments about trying to exegete this clip. Rather, just let her experience speak. I'll wrap it up before we move on tonight by just making a couple of comments for you to reflect on, okay? So would you please play the video? Thanks, Kathy and Martha. Um, it was a, a regular day, like any Tuesday, and we sent our two kids that are in school off to school. My barely 12-year-old was in sixth grade. Um, on that same day, she was invited by her trusted art and homeroom teacher to attend art club after school. So she texted us and we gave our permission for her to attend art club. And when we picked her up from that program after school, um, we could see on her face that something was incredibly wrong. Um, and so we were able to get it out of her what had happened to her. But essentially, the art teacher had invited in an outside presenter. It wasn't art club, it was GSA, or Gender and Sexuality Awareness is what they're calling it now. Um, this presenter had no qualifications to be speaking with children about sexuality and gender. She uses a PowerPoint with GSAs. It starts with her number one rule, what you keep in here, what you hear in here, keep in here. Um, she then brought out flags to describe various umbrella terms or defining words surrounding LGBTQ, as she called them. She told the kids that if they're not fully comfortable in their body, then they are transgender. So essentially told my daughter if she's not 100% comfortable in her female, body that she is transgender. Um, she did the gender bread person activity, which um, she provides this to all the, the middle school GSAs. It explicitly asks the little kids 11, 12, and 13 years old who they're sexually attracted to. So she essentially asked our little girl who she's sexually attracted to. And when she didn't know, she said, well, that means you're queer and gave her flags and stickers and bracelets and trans flags and stickers and bracelets um, that I later found out our one of our school board members, her Facebook profile picture is waving those same flags. So I know where they came from. Um, she also told the kids that heterosexuality and monogamy aren't normal. They're just common. Um, she said that parents might not be safe 
that it's okay to lie to them about where they are for this program and for future programming. Um, she runs an organization with kids from five to 18 called Skittles or Splash, depending on the age. And uh, it sends them invites to attend future programming without parental knowledge outside of the classroom. Um, so she's in our boys and girls clubs, our libraries our tri-county area school system. She's a substitute teacher in the tri-county area, um, and she's handing children her personal contact information along with the message that children or that parents aren't safe and that it's okay to contact her without parental knowledge. And she asked them to connect on teen chat platforms like Discord and WhatsApp, places where she knows parents aren't monitoring the conversation. Um, so we're really fortunate that our daughter came home and told us what happened. We knew something was wrong. She was very upfront about how she was not supposed to tell us, but um, how they used the flags and described different things. And she showed us all the paraphernalia that she was given, um, bracelets that say, sounds gay, I'm in, stickers, these flags. She got extra flags to give her friends. Um, so that's what happened. <laughs> it really caught us off guard. Um, it was a, a right. <laughs> Thank you. So that, like I said, is just a snapshot. And I don't know about you, but I had a reaction when I had a chance to meet Erin uh, just last week and had a chance to talk to her. I asked her for permission to be able to show you this clip tonight. And I guess we can all basically lament that culture's changed the way it is. We can try to be able to react in a hostile manner, or we can proactively, as Jesus followers, set strategies about how we can respond faithfully. And when we think about why we are making steps to be able to consider and have discussions with you as parents and actually enter into the realm of discussing beginning a high school ministry through our school, we really do believe that the environment around us compels us as followers of Christ to be able to provide a wonderful environment for children and families where their kids can grow up with a worldview that is decisively focused on the scriptures, decisively focused on Jesus as Lord, decisively biblical. And so you know, as well as I do, if you study culture, that laws have been passed, policies have been implemented already. And so we have the choice of either putting our head in the sand and hopefully pray it goes away, or we can endure it, or we can try to be able to accommodate, which we don't believe either of those two strategies work for us in a faithful manner. Or we can come to a place where we can act. And so we chose as leaders to be able to place before you this possibility of a proactive plan and strategy to be able to live the kingdom of God, to be able to live as God has designed us to live, to live in an environment that supports a God-honoring lifestyle the way that God designed it to be lived. Now, if you have questions about any of the things that you saw in this very short clip, you can ask me, rdougal at emmanuelloveland.org is my email, or we can talk afterwards for a few minutes. But we really do believe that it's our environment, not just, again, the things we praise God for what God has already been doing through the school, but it's our environment that gives us a compelling why to act as Christian people in a proactive manner, to do something to be able to care for and love our kids and our families that God has put in our sphere of influence. All right? Pastor Glenn, back to you. All right, thank you much. And some of what uh, Robin shared as far as links to this video and, and more resources, I'll have more to, to share with you at the end. We'll be sending out more information to you so you can look a little deeper on your own. But because we love children and because we care deeply about their mental emotional physical and spiritual well-being we have to provide an opportunity for an education that is excellent and also affirming of who these children are here at Emmanuel we partner with parents that is for many, many years, has been a part of our, our mission statement, a part of our vision 
that we are not here to commandeer the children. We are not here simply to shelter the children. But the idea, and especially as we look at moving into even higher education, is that we will provide a stimulating, healthy, Christ-centered learning environment for these kids in these critical years of their lives. Because of these realities, the challenging ones and the many, many positive ones that we have already in place here at Emmanuel, it seems like the right time to act. And so shortly after Cheryl and I had talked, well, actually the next day, uh, we called a team of us together that is primarily uh, our church staff that included Cheryl as our principal and myself. Pastor Robin was a part of that. Bill Busacker, Bill, raise your hand. You'll see Bill in just a second. Bill is retired principal here at Emmanuel, served at Emmanuel for six years, and is now out of retirement temporarily, maybe, teaching math. Uh, we also have Martha Harkins, who is our director of children and family ministries, a part of the team. Marcus Howard, our director of youth and young adult ministries, and Kathy Schleck, our director of worship and music ministries. We came together to, to talk about, okay, what do we do with this? Do we pursue it? Do we run with it? What could this potentially look like? What we came up with is a I would say at this point, just a basic vision for what Emmanuel Lutheran High School could be. And that statement is this, excellence in education with a Christ-centered foundation. Excellence in education with a Christ-centered foundation. Wrapped into this are the academics that are very important. Wrapped into it is Jesus, and not just a label of Jesus that we slap on to our school or our classes. Those of you who are part of Emmanuel know that that is not how we operate here, but Jesus is fundamentally part and parcel of everything that we do, everything that we teach, everything that we enjoy. And it's also about community and the many ways that we can foster healthy relationships within the Emmanuel community the Emmanuel School community, the Emmanuel Church community. We're dreaming big right now, and at the same time, we're looking at how we can get this off the ground in the most positive, effective, and also timely way. Uh, as a team, we've met a couple of times for conversation. Action items have included. I'm just going to run through a quick bullet list of items, of things that we as a team have been doing over the last month or so. Uh, we're exploring various creative possibilities like micro schools. We're talking with other Lutheran high schools across the country, including Lou High, Lutheran High School down in Parker, Mayor Lutheran in Minnesota, as well as a new high school startup in Arizona. More on that in just a moment. Uh, which grade or grades do we start with? Uh, partnerships with our area community colleges as well as our own Concordia universities across the country. Curriculum questions, extracurricular offerings, staffing and facilities that we'll need, when to open, and talking about some foundational principles as to the why and how of traveling down this path of expanding our school ministry to include a high school. Now, Bill Busacker, with his many connections in, the, in Lutheran education, came across a Lutheran high school that is starting up out in Arizona. This is one model, one model. And it's a demonstration, I think, of the creative possibilities for how a high school can start up and can function very well. So as a team, we looked at this, we explored this website, uh, what Bill discovered, Bill had a conversation with someone down there in Arizona. And as a team, we thought there were many points that resonated really with what we were discussing. 
and could potentially be some of the things that we might even borrow as we continue to travel down this road. So we thought it would be helpful to just lay out this one possibility and to briefly share what this model could bring to us, just to give a glimpse into what the possibilities could be. So Bill, if you wouldn't mind. Good evening. Um, I'm going to top Pastor Glenn. He said he's kind of excited to be here. I am beyond pumped to be a part of this. Um, I've been blessed over the years to actually be a part of the startup of two other Lutheran high schools. I was on a team that opened up Springfield Lutheran High School way back in 1979. Uh, was also on the team that uh, started Living Word Lutheran High School in Jackson, Wisconsin. That was back in 2001. I also spent 11 years teaching at Saginaw Valley Lutheran High School in the very, very early years of that school. So I know firsthand the impact Lutheran high schools can have on kids. Um, I am just so excited for two reasons. The need has never been greater. Um, based on what is going on around us, there's never been a greater need for Lutheran Christian secondary education. I have to believe that many of you are feeling the same thing or you wouldn't be sitting here tonight. But on the other hand, the opportunity has never been greater because there are so many new creative ways that we can do school these days that really weren't available 20, 30, 40 years ago. And so what, what we have found is uh, a new Lutheran high school, they will be opening up this fall uh, Christ Greenfield School there in a suburb of Phoenix. And again, I, I want to stress what Pastor Glenn mentioned. This is one model that we have looked at. We think there are a lot of pieces of this model that fit what might work here, but this is simply one model. This isn't what it would be. A lot of pieces we might steal, but certainly some things, even if we were to go with this model, that we would wind up doing some adaptation to fit our situation here. They, they are planning on opening this fall. They're planning on opening grades 9, 10, and 11 this year, and then adding 12th grade a year from now. So they're dreaming big. They are using what is called a hybrid model. A hybrid model means there is, there's a mix of in-person and remote classes that are being offered. So the way that they have their program structured, their students are expected to be on campus Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings basically for three hours. And in that time on campus, they will have face-to-face -face instruction. Um, they will be having a Bible class and they will be doing leadership development. One of their core values as a school is leadership development. So those will be the two pieces they will be focusing on three days a week. And I, I see people taking pictures. We will send these slides out to you. If you've provided us with your email address, we'll provide you with all of these slides along with a link to the website for this school so you can take a look at it. So they're in person three days a week with their, with their school staff there. And then, the rest of their instruction is going to be, is going to be provided remotely. Um, they will be doing online coursework. They are choosing to do that through Orange Lutheran Online. Orange Lutheran Online is a program from Orange Lutheran High School out in California. Orange Lutheran has been providing online classes since 2004. So they are very experienced at it. They, they've got a very robust curriculum. We've actually sort of dipped our toe into those waters this year just a little bit. I teach an algebra class, which is primarily eighth graders. Actually have one seventh grader in there this year. Last year, I also had one seventh grader. So he is doing an online geometry class this year. He's not doing it through Orange Lutheran. He's doing it through Mayer Lutheran High School, 
Uh, it's called Genesis Virtual Academy. That has worked really well for us. He comes in, he sits in my classroom as I'm teaching algebra. He comes in, he grabs his computer, he logs on, he works through that class while we're doing algebra. That has worked extremely well. Um, those are a couple of options if we decide to go with an online programming. Uh, Genesis Virtual Academy comes out of Mayer, Minnesota. Orange comes out of Orange, California. Um, we will provide you with links to both of those programs as well so you can take a look at those. Those are really neat programs because there's a lot of flexibility. Students can log on to those at any point in time and work through that class. In a traditional high school, your math class may run from 9 o'clock to 9.50. With this uh, online programming, you can log on to that at any point in the day and work through that class. It doesn't have to be at a set time. Even though that work is being done online, those students have access to that instructor if there are questions. Um, the young man I've got working in my classroom, he can at any point contact the instructor in Minnesota. He can do that by phone, he can do that by email, he can text him and get help if that's necessary. So that, that, that assistance from the instructor is always available. Um, Orange Lutheran specifically sets office hours for those online teachers so that students know in this window of time that instructor will be available if that student needs help. The other thing that's been really helpful is with the program we've been using, Genesis Virtual Academy, the feedback we're getting has been tremendous. I can log on as the teacher here in the building, I can log on and see exactly what that student has done today. I can see how he did today. I get a score for what he did today. Parents have that same level of access. We get weekly reports, we get monthly reports, so we know exactly how that student is doing. Orange Lutheran provides that same type of feedback. So there's a, a great level of communication that happens there. The way that the program is set up in Arizona is that they have structured a learning center and that learning center is open all day long, five days a week. So students who are doing the online work, they can choose to work at school in that learning center. And that learning center is set up with uh, just a wide variety of very flexible types of workspaces. So students can work individually, they can work collaboratively, um, and I've got a diagram of that that I'll show you in just a second. So this is not the same as what we dumped kids into out of necessity during that COVID lockdown, where kids were working at home and parents were pulling their hair out trying to figure out how do we, how do we manage that. This is a center in the school that is staffed by the school staff so that there's some supervision, there is support for students there. They can be working there or they can work at home or frankly they can go down to the local Starbucks and work there. Um, they're able to work from anywhere. This is a concept drawing of that learning center. This is one of those diagrams you gotta look at for about 10 seconds to figure out exactly what's going on. But you're looking down at it from above and you can probably see it better when we send out the PowerPoint, but you can see there are just a variety of types of seating arrangements there. Kids can be working individually, they can be working in small groups, they can be working with uh, staff support in that learning center. And that's open um, all school hours, five days a week. So kids have access to that that is specifically set up as a high school space. One of the things that really this model brings is a great deal of flexibility. Um, kids have, if they're doing that online work, they can be doing it in the learning studio, they can be doing it at home, they can be doing it from any place. 
When I talked with the school leader down in Arizona, he mentioned that one of the things they were finding was that they were getting a great deal of interest from families who had kids who were heavily involved in sports because that may have involved a, a traveling team. Uh, they were getting a lot of interest from some families with high school students who had part-time jobs because this allowed much more flexibility. Families who want to do some traveling during the school year. Again, that flexibility is there. So that's, that's really what they were seeing as a plus to this type of program. At the same time, as Pastor Glenn mentioned, it's really important that we're creating a Christian community. One of the things that happens as kids get to middle school and into high school, parents, your influence starts to wane a little bit and the influence of the peers becomes so much more. What better time to have them connected with a Christian community of peers? By using this hybrid model, that enables that because the kids are together in class that three mornings a week. So that community is created. Um, in that learning space, they've got the ability to work collaboratively. Again, that's creating a, a community. One of the things they're doing in Arizona is they want to very intentionally connect the kids from this new Lutheran high school with the kids from an existing Lutheran high that's on the other end of the community. They're going to bring them together periodically for chapel worship, for servant activities, for some social types of things. And as we here talked about that, we sort of wondered how, how could we do that type of thing here? Could we potentially connect kids here with the kids down in Parker a couple times a year? That's a bit of a trip, but it's possible to do that maybe more feasibly, how could we tap into some of the youth groups from the area congregations and connect kids into this Christian community? So I think there's just all sorts of possibilities there. The other thing this is doing is it's preparing kids for a world that's really rapidly changing. Um, think about your work environments. How many work environments have gone to being partly remote or fully remote. I found an interesting statistic that said a vast majority of kids that are in college will be doing at least part of their degree program online. So this type of program would help to prepare kids to be successful in that type of a setting. As I talked with the folks down in Gilbert, Arizona, they're dreaming big. They want to kick this off with three grades the first year. I think most Lutheran high schools that start, start off with a ninth grade and add one, year, one grade per year. They're determined to kick it off with grades 9, 10, and 11 that first year. They are also dreaming, they're hoping that this actually grows into a full-fledged brick-and-mortar school. Could that happen here? I don't know what God has in store for us. One of the things they said is, if it does grow into that brick and mortar school, what they see doing is keeping this hybrid model as sort of a smaller sub-school or a smaller academy within that larger school. So again, parents and families could choose which type of a setting would work best for them. There's so much going on around us. Uh, the time just seems like it's right for us to be jumping into this. And as we have talked about this, as we have dreamt, as we have prayed over this, really the question we're wrestling with, the question I would throw out to you is, what do you think God might be challenging us? What do you think God might be calling us to do here? If he's calling us to do this, he's gonna equip us to do this, and he's gonna make it successful. Um, part, of the, part of what we will provide for you will have a number of websites that you can take a look at. I'll be around afterwards if you have questions on this, would love to talk with you. Thanks. Thank you for that, Bill. Creativity abounds and the possibilities abound. That is, is all very exciting, in some ways overwhelming, and yet to say, wow, 
what could happen here very quickly. We as a team have been asking lots and lots of questions. We're getting some clarity that's starting to move us down a particular path. But what tonight is, as we have on our own been able to collect a great deal of information so far, our hope is that tonight is going to keep moving us in that right direction. And what we are looking for or inviting from all of you tonight are some of your questions, some of your feedback, some of your concerns, things that you may be wondering, or some of your ideas that we are going to, whether it's if you're ready and willing to stand up to a mic, we'll give you a, a moment to do that and ask some of those things, share some of those things, or whether it's after the meeting, to send us an email and, and just put some of your mind and your thinking down and send those to us for us to be able to process, to work through, and to keep thinking about. But that's what our, our desire is for tonight. So, we're going to take a moment that if you do have questions, comments, concerns, ideas, feedback, anything at all, and you are uh, wanting to share it, please step up to the mic, and we are ready to, to record the questions, the thoughts that you may have, and take those in. So, the floor is yours. And if you would, I'd identify yourself. Yep, identify, let us know who you are. And uh, my name is Jared Milkey. My daughter is in first grade here. She's right there. <laughs> Put her on the spot. Uh, so my first thought and maybe questions or maybe a concern would be is uh, the big what if. So if you guys were to say, we're going to start this high school in the fall of 2023, and you start advertising it, um, out, do you have an idea or a ballpark about how many students that you think you would actually have in the fall of 2023? My question is just how much do you think interest you have out there from the public? You know, have you checked into, I know resurrection is overwhelmed with students. Um, they're um, on a waiting list out there and I'm sure there's probably starting to get more from public. How many eighth graders you think would, involve, would enroll for the um, 2000? Uh, 23 class. Yeah, and it's a great question for which we do not have answers, okay. but we have been asking that okay. as well in terms of, and this was one of those steps okay. as far as starting to gauge some interest and pushing out the just idea. Kinda, we're kind of just at ground zero right now and we're looking to start promoting this as much as we can and starting to get the word out. Is that correct? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, and we are we're not closing the door to this fall, whether that's with five students, eight students, 10 students, yeah. or if we're not in a position where we feel we're ready to do that, okay. could look toward next and fall as well. Do you guys have the capacity here at the school where if you did have a ninth grade class that had 10 or 15 students in it, is it here and you could start it right away? Yes, okay. right now we do have, we do have some space uh, some rooms that are open and actually our, can I share about our computer lab? Our computer <laughs> lab got emptied out because it's, it's ancient. And so all those computers are gone and we're looking at uh, asking the question of, you know, what do we do with that room? Sure. And might that be a kind of a student union common Great. space okay. for a high school already this fall? Okay. Great. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Crystal Landis, I have two students here, second and fifth grade, and so I'm really excited uh, because I've got a middle schooler coming up next year to have an opportunity to do exactly what y'all were talking about. I couldn't agree more about the concerns. Can you just step up a little closer? Thank you. I think I'm taller than I am. Um, 
<laughs> so I'm really excited um, because I have a middle schooler coming up. Um, we share the same concerns that y'all voiced tonight. Um, it's very frightening uh, what's going on right now. And so it's, I'm really excited. I'll be honest, coming here, I was thinking brick and mortar. And I was thinking, woo woo, like full high school, we're gonna have a new building by fall. Totally unrealistic. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so, so I was taken down a peg or two. But I do have an idea that sparked, um, because freshmen and sophomore maybe are not ready for that total online, if we could look at in school even in one of these centers, we just keep them in all day and keep them structured for freshmen and sophomore and then start transitioning them to more of a, a independent. More freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and maybe even have those more independent, higher level students mentoring and helping educate huh. the younger ones. Great thoughts. Good. Thank you for that. Other things? Come on up. I don't need the mic. I don't need the mic. No, come on up to the mic for live stream. Otherwise, live stream, who is there, can't hear us. Sorry, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah. I do a lot of stuff here. Step on up to the mic. I want to just turn around and talk to you. My name is Sarah. I have two kids here on campus now. I have a three year old, or sorry, four year old and a nine-year-old, and she's in third grade. Um, one of my questions is, is with growing the new program and being very excited about it, what does that look like growing our middle school programs and upping our enrollment and focusing on that, putting it towards growing the interest in the high school, not only with academic, but athletic, extracurricular, you know, everything yep. that goes with that. So upping enrollment here at the moment and doing just what we do, not better, but just bigger and growing that I think is really important for us. We see kind of our biggest drop off, I feel like, as an existing parent around middle school. So something I look at to a high school and keeping like what Crystal said, on campus, keeping that growing if we had so much interest, we wouldn't need as much remote, even if it's a great alternative, and using it as an extra alternative, but keeping it on campus so much. So if we can keep our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders so much longer, we'd have so much more interest in high school. Yeah. So I would love to know and interested in that as well. Excellent. And that, that is a part of what, what we are thinking that if we have something that goes beyond the middle school, that that is going to be a, a pretty significant part of the retention or the, the coming in to middle school. And so, so we're looking at that really as a hand in glove. And yes, bigger and better, you know, always continuing to, to look to improve. What can we expand? What can we do better? At, at all levels, but especially right now, because yes, we have experienced over the years a drop off, especially in that, the middle school years. But our, our hope, our prayer is that by adding this piece, it's going to be a win-win on both ends. And a little bit with what, what Bill had shared with Craig Greenfield and what they are looking at in Arizona, I think is you know, certainly a part of our hope, our big dreaming as well, that what we're looking at right now is to say, how can we, how can we get this off the ground in an excellent program, but as quickly as we can? Because time is of the essence. I mean, our, again, our culture is, is traveling down some paths at light speed that what we have experienced. And we want to be able to try to get something in place as quickly as we can. And then the question continues to be, what is God going to do with this? You know, what does he have in store? Potentially, I mean, we've got the land, we've got the space. And even in our master plan buildings 
that are, are in place that could be a high school, middle school, high school, all sorts of things. Possibilities are out there. So thank you for that, Sarah. And that has very much been a part of our conversations and a part of our thinking too. Thank you. Lori, go ahead. Hi, I'm Lori Adson, and I'm a retired Lutheran educator, not high school. Um, and we, my husband and I, have a two-year-old granddaughter, and it's our help of dream. She will go here and all the way through. Um, but I did serve on the board for Lutheran High School for 10 years while we lived in San Antonio, Texas. It was a struggling high school. We call the principal who revived it and grew it. I love the out of the box thinking um, because time is of the essence, but also it can be difficult to start a traditional high school because we gotta call so many teachers, classrooms, all of that. I think this would be an absolutely fantastic way to get it started. I only have one question and that is um, would the I forget what you called it, the resource room or the, the, the room. Learning center. Uh, of they, yeah, of. learning center. Um, be available all the time. I'm thinking of working parents who don't want to leave their kids home two days a week or in the afternoons. Yeah, again, the model that Christ has set up is that is, is open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 3 o'clock. Okay. And so that is there and staffed. And so that's yes. Issue. Yep. Right. Thank you, Lori. And also that, and Katie, you can come on up, uh, but just a little bit more off of uh, some of what Sarah had asked or shared uh, is some of what we have in place already. The question about staffing, about teachers, that again, some of what we have talked about trying to be creative with this is to say, can we, if we start with, a, with grade nine or grade nine and 10, why can't we tap into our, our current middle school staff? And yeah, there again, uh, without going specific, some creative thinking that, that we're doing on that front as well. So, Katie. I'm just curious. Um, obviously, it's going to take a lot of funding to, I would, to start a high school, um, whether, whatever it would look like. So I'm just curious, is, are there funds that currently exist to help get something off the ground? Or are we talking about solely the funding coming from tuition? Um, is one question I have. Um, are there some funds already available or is, are we looking at just, you know, this coming from tuition? Okay, can I answer that one yep. before? Uh, no, we don't have any money here. <laughs> it's ministry and right. uh, we're, we're running by faith. We don't have a store. Of, of funds. I don't know getting this off the ground, quite honestly, Katie, I don't know that it, it is going to take an extreme amount of funding. Uh, I think part of what, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself, not uh, for the team, but if this is in place, I would envision that we are going to put word out to our school families to our congregation and say here's what we got here's what the need here's a b c and d of the specifics of of what needs to happen and i believe wholeheartedly that those funds whatever may be needed will be raised so and then uh just a additional question um do you envision having a designated individual who would be the director, whatever you want to title, of the middle school, high school, or would this all fall to Cheryl? <laughs> she does a fabulous job, but her plate is very, very full. Full. Yeah. Um, what does that look like? Excellent. Yeah, we're just going to dump it all on Cheryl. <laughs> she can take more. We added toddlers. We'll add high school. No, uh, that is not realistic. Cheryl is a superwoman and is such a gift of God uh, for all that she has done over the, these 33 years in, in building early childhood and now these last four years uh, doing what she has done uh, as director and principal of our school. 
but we are looking and saying, no, we can't do that. It is going, whether it would be immediate, uh, again, there are, without laying out any specifics, there are already some creative potential to get this rolling for some individuals who would head up and, you know, whether it's high school, middle school, eventually growing into high school, or that would be the larger umbrella, it's a question and a good one. But yes, that, that in time we will need an individual who will be the principal of the high school, middle school. Good question, thank you. Allison, did you? Thank you, first of all, for everything you guys have done so far in these initial conversations. It's, it's very exciting. My family is thrilled, um, and I come from a background in education, public education, in fact, um, and I know that there are challenges with keeping a school staffed, um, and I would just like to come from the standpoint of, you know, not only as a parent who wholeheartedly is behind everything that, that is going on here, but also as an educator um, and, and, and coming behind the staff that we are, are hoping and praying comes to this school and stands you know, in these positions that we are going to be filling that um, we take very good care of them because ultimately staff retention is is one of the, the greatest ways to grow a school. Take good care of your staff and they will take good care of our children and you know everything you know moves along a lot more smoothly. So I know that our staff here is just incredible and I know that we have some openings this, this coming year and and so staffing a school is is tricky in and of itself. So I guess I would just say as we have these conversations and they keep going that we kind of keep that at the forefront, that of course God is miles ahead of all of the decisions that we're making, but that we make this a very attractive you know, place for educators and that in and of itself will then attract families, you know, first and foremost, so. Good, that's so noted. Thought. Thank you very much for that and so true. All right, so uh, I'm Brian Basil. Um, I'm a member. You're good. Do I have to go back here? <laughs> I'm, I'm talking into it, Kathy. Is that fine? Okay. Um, I'm a member here, and I've been here for you know many years now. Um, I'm also one of the members of the Board of Elders here at church, um, and I am a teacher at Fossil Ridge High School. So um, I definitely have an interesting standpoint uh, as I look at this project. The one thing that really does make me just, what are the questions and you know, here, you know, here's the questions and the answers are very difficult, is high school is different for a lot of different people. For some people, they really need those social aspects. For others, they just need a place to learn. Um, and for others, they just need a place to belong. And, um, the one thing, especially with, you know, because obviously we're not going to start something and it's a full high school, like I, like no way or shape or form. Um, the one piece of concern I do have as I look at this is having parents that are um, worried about the culture and climate choose to have their children come here for this and they were not the ones that were successful during COVID. The ones that, when they were stuck at home with a computer and told to work on their own, they were not successful. And I had a lot of those students myself. Now, I know there's a difference between being stuck at home and having the learning center and stuff like that, but when you do on online classes, there's a massive level of self-motivation that has to be there from the students. And some students just don't fit that model well. And so then you start running into this issue of, or could run into an issue of where, uh, you know, how does that give 
the school a bad reputation because this person's not being successful, and then word gets out that they don't even help, and so, you know, a thousand and one things of, you know, it's all hearsay at that point. So just something to think about is what levels of support are going to exist if we do do, you know, the model of, you know, in Arizona to really make sure that that level of support is there for those that need the personal one-on-one, -on -one, not only support for learning, but also the nudging of do your stuff. Because let's be honest, if you put a kid in front of a computer, classwork ain't the first thing that's gonna happen. So um, it, it's just something to think about a, as we look into these possible options for getting us on is what do all of those support levels look like? Because online learning is really, really tough. You have kids that excel and you have kids that really struggle with it, so. Good, thank you for that, Brian. Point well taken. And again, I think as we've all experienced, the, the ideal is in-person learning. And what this hybrid may bring about is, uh, I think as Bill alluded to, and I'll let Bill, if you wanna come on up, uh, it is not what we did in COVID. Um, well, why don't you go ahead and yeah. why don't you get to a mic? Yeah, just, just to respond to that real briefly, that's a great point. One of the things they are doing in Arizona is they have what they are calling content coaches in that learning center. And those content coaches are equipped to help students in addition to the teacher online who's helping students. So you're right, that, that is absolutely something. I think it would also be essential that a school functioning in that model does a good job of screening potential students because it is not going to be, not everybody is going to be successful in that model. Bill, do you know how many coaches they have? No, I don't know that. I'm not even sure they know that at this point. They're still working on opening up. Thank you, Bill. I just had a quick question. My name's Krista, Kayla's mom. Um, as far as sports, because I know that's probably going to be something that's going to hold some families back, will they be able to partake in the public school sports like the kids at CEC can do? Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's, that's, that's Yeah, that is, uh, as far as sports goes, that's a given at this point yet, <laughs> but you can participate in sports through the public school where you, in the district you reside, or in the, um, I'm not getting the language right, in the place where you are. Yep. Yeah, and with that, sports are a question that we've talked about, and again, starting up right now, that's where we are just going to have to point, especially if, you know, we start within the year or in the next year it would be, you know, we're not gonna have all sports. Might that be down the road? Again, big picture, see where this thing goes. Say again, Jeremy. Yes, oh, you can, you can opt in anywhere. Okay, good to know. More things we'll keep exploring and hold out. Thank you. Sarah? Yeah, you do. Sorry. Come on up. With all the mentions that you gave to the people that are on the board looking or the, the active committee. Yes. I didn't notice any school board members. So wondering at that point where that transitions to actively looking committee. Everyone's a decision maker always yeah. in the church. But with that being decision making people as well and maybe parents at the school and newer incoming families not knowing that board as well sure or maybe wanting to get more actively involved yep and that's a part of what part of what tonight is we got a number of our school board who is here tonight and that's a part of what we're looking at as far as okay what's next where do we go what else do we need to look into what else do we need to explore what are the resources who are the people that we need to add add to the team, either the team itself or some of the project pieces. So, thank you. Any other questions, comments, Jeremy? 
I'll just do, see I get close because I'm, I'm used to this, but um, so I'm always the extracurricular guy. So, you know, I always love the extra classes that are gonna draw people in. So like finding out that we had a wood shop was awesome, you know, cause I didn't know we did. Um, but how are we, how, and that's, that's a lot of staffing things, you know, how, what, what are ways that we can adapt? And these are just questions for, obviously not an answer right now, because I, I know the answer, but how can we bring other, other things in for them to life, you know, actual yep. life things um, that are applicable? Um, Sports-wise, you know, I, I love that um, character in every way, shape, or form. Um, and then um, the third thing was is um, what, what, what are we doing actively? And I know, I know you sent out a, but I'm asking in general at this point, um, social media, you know, how can we draw attraction to this? How can we help as parents? How can we help as uh, teachers? How can we help as students uh, to draw more people to social media? Um, that's a giant uh, category, I know. Um, from the email today um, or yesterday, uh, some things are coming out with that, but um, there's a lot, a lot of things with that uh, media aspect. Um, is there, is there some kind of, some kind of team that's going to drive that? Is there, um, you know, uh, I guess is my question for that. So. Yeah, and that is one as we're as we have talked, the PR marketing element of it. That is one of three or four that we're talking about uh, that are key for us. And just to speak to the, the extracurriculars, uh, that too we've, we've talked kind of in general terms. And again, just being creative. There are some uh, interesting things that are going on, I think even in uh, here in Northern Colorado, that we've, we're aware of, we've kind of tapped into to, to say, you know, might it be that we have a couple of weeks out of each quarter or each semester where we bring in people with special uh, unique gifts, talents, can teach a, a two week class of, you know, whether it's woodworking or uh, something else, uh, but creative things that again would add to, uh, I was thinking Financial Peace University, you know, did we have that taught in a short period, or other life skills, or other things that are uh, extracurricular in nature. So again, those are things that we're keyed into thinking about, knowing that's an important part of the, the social component, the community aspect, and, and just the growth of these kids, these young people. Thank you. Martha. I will give a plug to our social media, just in case none of you are following. So we have um, an awesome lady, Ashley, on staff that you might not know that she is doing all of our social media and has really increased it and the views and all of that stuff. But you guys liking Emmanuel Lutheran Church and Emmanuel Lutheran School and sharing things does wonders. You guys all have your connections between school and church and work and all those things. So like you are our best advertisers also. Um, so give us a like and share our things on Facebook because that seriously is how people find out about things. So that's my two cents. Thank you, Martha. Uh, anything else for tonight? Kathy? Uh, someone online said she's not looking for an answer tonight, but her question is whether there will be any support for children with learning differences. And like I said, she's not looking for an answer tonight, but that's just a question that was raised with one of our online viewers. Okay, good, thank you. We'll note that. Anything else? All right, thank you so much for coming out tonight as uh, another step down this road. A couple of things as you leave. First of all, if you did not, make sure that you did sign up and give us the information. We are creating a, an email group and as Bill alluded to and Pastor Robin did, we are gonna email out, uh, it may not be tomorrow, we'll try to get this out as quickly as we can, but what we wanna reach out to everybody, and I'll say for those who are online, if you wanna email your contact information to high school at Emmanuel 
loveland.org will get you added in as well. But what we're going to send out uh, as quickly as we can will be a link to the video Pastor Robin shared, as well as a link to more of Erin Lee as she expounded on that, that short three-minute clip uh, with another about 15 minutes, uh, more ooh, awful, uh, unnerving kinds of things. Uh, the PowerPoint presentation, Bill shared about school in Arizona, related links from that Arizona school. Uh, we'll also have uh, Orange Lutheran and Mayor Lutheran, a part of that, those online schools. Uh, the email address to reach us, the live stream link. Uh, if you want to share what went on here tonight with some other people, you can share that link and they can get on and take a look as well. And we will keep everybody appraised of all further developments. Uh, again, we're trying to be as expedient and, and as timely as we can with a fire under us, because this is important for our kids, for us as well. So we'll keep all of you appraised of answers, responses uh, to questions, concerns expressed tonight, and uh, everything else as we continue to move forward as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm.